Hello and welcome, this is Eagle Eye 621 and today I am stuck in an inescapable prison. By any human at least, I will talk in this video about some of the other inescapable prison designs you may have seen and why they really aren't inescapable. If you're feeling very cruel, I have a version over here that even a computer could not escape. And I'll show you how to build this one that gives them a fighting chance, but not really so let's talk a little bit about what is going on and why this is set up the way it is and as you can see i am stuck inside some water column that is bubbling and the bubbles are switching from pulling to push which is constantly knocking my character all over the place now i don't have mining fatigue uh so this may actually be possible without it, but not really. You can see the problem is that because you're jumping around and you're getting pulled down and pushed back up, you can't really mine any block for long enough to break it, even without the mining fatigue. And glass is a lot easier to break than the crying obsidian that you will make it out of. So good luck to them. Now, you can't swim down enough to attack the soul soil or the magma as you can see as I hold shift to try and get down there as fast as I can and still just barely you cannot make that and there is no roof to jump out of because it just continues up now you can put a block here to keep somebody underwater but there is a glitch in the game which I can actually show you because it's kind of interesting if I switch into creative mode and I drop down a little bit and put this glass right here then I go back into survival mode and I just try and punch out this glass. You can see that even though I'm pulled away and I can no longer attack it, the block remembers that I was punching at it, which is kind of a strange glitch. Ultimately, I just leave the air blocks there because why not? You can put some crying obsidian there and make them think there is something to mine through. Uh, by the way, it would take, and there you can see the glass just broke, even though we were bouncing in and out of it. It would take uh, about a month for the crying obsidian to break, and I'll get into those numbers as well. So really, you're kind of stuck in purgatory. Uh, you can try and hold spacebar and stay above the water. You do get sucked in periodically, and you continue to bounce. So a computer may be able to maintain their target on a specific block, but I don't think a human can do that, and you would need to maintain your target block, considering that this is crying obsidian, considering it's going to be mining fatigue, and considering that your feet are not on the ground, uh, let's just say 5.35 days in a row. That's no sleeping, no eating, not even a bathroom break. 5.38 days trying to maintain the same bouncing block. So let's get out of here our super cheaty spectator way, and let's get our stand-in. And when you don't use mods, well, this is our stand-in. Sorry, Dream, you are going into my inescapable prison. So good luck with that. You have some decent skills, but I don't think even you can target a specific block for over five days in a row with no sleep, eating, or bathroom breaks. But, uh... Give that a try. So now let's talk about some other inescapable type prisons and why they don't work. And speaking of Dream, the one that he is stuck in right now, or maybe he's escaped, looks something like this. It's a giant obsidian box, and we have some pretend lava standing all around. And, well, as a YouTuber, Ray Works, already pointed out, when you have lava and obsidian, you can get fire, and fire means nether portal. And, uh, interestingly enough, it spawns right into a nether fortress, so I don't know if any speedrunners want to take a crack at this. It's probably still a terrible seed, but if you do, let's say, there you go. You can use this seed. Now, some people say, well, let's make a shifting wall design. The problem with shifting wall designs, if I switch into survival... And I target, let's say, this block, is that the blocks kind of remember you're punching them as you're shifting them. So you can see it looks a little bit glitchy, it looks like it's going back and forth, but the damage does continue to stack. And sure enough, you will have one of them break. So somebody says, well, hold on, what if you use two different types of blocks? And, um, well... 
problem with two different kinds of blocks is the same problem you have with a single type of block and sure enough at some point you will have one of them break there you go let's go back into creative mode turn this off now you can have people saying well what about just your giant floor of obsidian and sure it'll take a while to escape but this is not inescapable in survival mode if we punch down do our f3 plus t trick and now we can just walk away and uh, maybe go away for a little weekend vacation not that anybody can travel right now but it'll take a long time Punching into obsidian with mining fatigue uh, will take a little over 25 hours to break. It's the same for crying obsidian and this. They're all a hardness of 50. I'll get into more specifics a little bit later. And again, you can walk away. It's two layers thick. It'll be done in the weekend. You can see that crack starting to form. So inescapable it is not. And then the other issue you have with a lot of them is... You have a giant box, even if you make this out of something else, to hide them in here. If they're clever and they log off where the guard is still in play, well, a mob can spawn and uh, kill the player. And I know there are some bed traps, but most of those bed traps do suffer from some glitching potential. The same goes for any of the walls that regenerate themselves. You can usually glitch inside once you break one of the blocks and then you can jump up through the walls because again you're now inside them doesn't really work so most of the prisons kind of give this all a hand wave by saying well there's some prison guards that are guarding the person in case they escape and honestly if you're standing guard at a prison because you have to stand guard to punish them aren't you kind of in a prison too right the guard can't leave who are we punishing we're we punishing the person in the prison or are we punishing the guard who is also stuck there now in terms of can they be freed from the outside without a guard the answer is that 100 percent there is no possible way to keep somebody locked in prison if they have help from the outside for the very specific fact if they were smart they could have set up an ender pearl stasis chamber somewhere 30,000 blocks out, you'll never find it. It doesn't matter if you kill them because it's in an unloaded chunk. And while they're stuck in prison, they tell their friend to go journey out there and teleport them away. And there is zero ability to stop that. It is just not possible. In terms of anything but an ender pearl stasis chamber, I'm going to took you over to my unbreakable security video it's currently version 2 i'm working on version 3 to basically stop anybody from being able to get in and you combine them and then you can do as best you can now let's talk a little bit about the breaking so you can understand the timings that i'm giving you and in minecraft the breaking relies on a couple of things it starts out with a question of block hardness which you can look up in the wiki and then are using the correct tools. I have a tool video that I will link, which goes into a little bit more detail. But basically, if you're using the wrong tool, which means your fist in this case, you take the block hardness and you multiply that by five. And that's how many seconds it will take to break normally. But you can slow that down. And there are three things that slow that down. If your head is underwater without the correct enchantments, I'll head you over to my armor video right now. If your feet are off the ground and if there is mining fatigue three, underwater is times five. Your head underwater or your feet off the ground are the same thing. They're both times five. And then mining fatigue is 370.370370 and so on and so forth times as long. So to use one specific example, if we're using the crying obsidian, which I made this out of behind me, and I made it specifically because in terms of that mob trick, you can see terrible computer and all, but the light level is nine next to this stuff, meaning you're not gonna have any mob spawning. I also have some beacons, as you can see below. One is on regeneration and one is on defense, so you can't starve to death. There is no bed trap above. If the player can't die, there's no need to have a bed trap, but if you really, really, really want a bed trap, you can bed trap them and drop them into the top of this, and then your heart can be satisfied with your bed trap. Back to our block 
breaking. So our crying obsidian is 50. So with the wrong tool, that means punching it like this, it will take you 250 seconds. Mining fatigue alone, without any of this water shenanigans, will increase that, as I said, let's round it to 370.37 times as long. So that would take you to 92.6 thousand seconds, which is 25.72 hours. If we add the fact that the player's feet never touch the ground, and we multiply that by 5 again, that gives us 463,000 seconds, which is 5.358 days. That's real-life 24-hour days. And then if we add the fact that your head is going to be underwater for something like this one, or most of the time in this one, that's another five, which gives us 2.3 million seconds to break a single piece of crying obsidian that is 26.79 days. It's basically a month of doing nothing but punching a single block that won't even drop when you finally break it. In terms of the weaker components in this, which are here mostly for show, and if you want to give them a little bit of sport, the magma and the soul sand on the bottom have a hardness of 0.5. That means with the underwater, not on the ground, and mining fatigue, you're looking at 6.43 hours. Not that you can actually even touch them, so that part doesn't matter. And as for our glass, the weakest component here has a hardness of 0.3. So with the fatigue, the underwater, and not on the ground, that will give you 3.858 hours in order to break a single piece, which as I said, won't even drop anything. So now let's get started with this design right here. I'm going to assume you guys know how to make the beacons. The slime part isn't necessary. I just think it looks a little bit cooler, but let's see what we're gonna need to make that. And that is right here. Now I'm using glass again, just for show. You really wanna use the crying obsidian. You're going to need one piece that has a non-sticky if you're going to use the slime, but I'll build it without the slime for now. And the glass is going to show you how high up we're going and how many air blocks we have. And then this is instead of a water source block with lots of buckets or kelp or something. I just have ice here, but the ice is meant to mean water. And you can see the rest of this. This piston does have to be sticky. These two are normal. And let's actually just make a copy of this in case there's going to be a world download later. If there's some interest, let me know. And let's come over here. And you're going to start by centering yourself. And you're going to center yourself around your magma and your soul sand. Each one of these things, as I said, I'm going to do it without the slime components. On one side, you're going to see that it's pushing. And on the other side, we have an air block just like this. Now we're going to come and make a bit of a pincer with our smooth stone. This can be really any solid block you want. As you can see here, we're taking a giant U shape. So let's go out two like this. Let's go out two like this. Let's come across. Let's come across like this. And you can see that here we do have and extra space, although we do that mostly for the slime. I maintain that extra space anyways, because I think it's a little bit more on the aesthetics. And we're going to come across like this. And now we want to set up our circuit and we're gonna break a little bit of things, but it's a little bit easier to set this up before you set up your clock so that you get everything correct. And you're going to have whichever way you want, you're going to want you to be on the soul soil more than on your magma blocks, which means that you want a shorter clock to come and push on this side. So this is what we're going to do here. Like this. And then a longer clock for the soul. So again, we're now going to go in the opposite direction. So let's go this way and this way and like this then we're going to come back in a second just like that and all of these are going to be on four ticks 
so that we have our proper timing delay. This is the riveting content that I know you all came here for. Let's watch these repeaters get put on our proper ticks. We're gonna get their redstone in between. Just like this. And now for our clock, as I said, we are going to need to break a couple of things. So let's get our observer ready. Let's move away our slime. Let's get this ready. And let's get our lever as well. And you're going to want your slime block to output into one of the dots. So I'm going to do it on this corner, just like this. We're going to break that to have our observer block facing directly up right here. It is going to be looking at a solid block, which we have to continue our clock chain for. And then we need to be able to pull and push that out of the way with our sticky piston and our lever. So you can see we can grab that and nothing will happen here. You'll see we'll come around to this side and get stuck. But now when I add this, you can see that it will go around and it will continue and make that circuit. And I have this in the wrong direction, so don't mind me. Make sure that you actually do this properly and you have your correct directions so you don't look like a fool on a YouTube video or to your friends. Now, as I said, when we push this in, we will have a completed circuit, which will last until we pull this block out of the way. And there it goes. And you can see that the magma block is there for the shorter amount of time. And then it switches back. So we can turn this off. And now we're going to want to target on the block in the middle. So we're going to use our regular glass. And we know from our ice blocks that we're going to want 26. So we're going to put this here. And this is going to go all around. I would make this out of your crying obsidian. Just like this. If you're using your slime blocks, which I said you don't have to, but it does make it look a little bit cooler. Then make sure that for this block right here, or whichever one is touching your slime, is an immovable object. And then we need to go up 26. So this is the first one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. That is enough counting with Eagle Eye 621 to last a lifetime. And let's use some rapid build skills to get all around here. And do this on this side. And one more. And now in survival, ice is nice and easy. I'll even have a simple farm to that. But instead of using our ice, I'm just going to use some water buckets because in creative mode, they don't empty. So let's get in here and fill this up. Rapid clicking activated. And make sure that these are all source blocks and you can tell that oh no oh don't ruin my redstone oh no okay i got very lucky there very lucky uh you can tell that they're source blocks because they are bubbling if they are not bubbling you missed a source block somewhere and you can tell also that we have 33 of this white stained glass and doing our dividing by four with one extra, that means we're gonna have eight air blocks. So even though we already had enough counting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then again, and again, and one last time. And that is your prison all done and dusted. As I said, I would make that out of crying obsidian because this is possible-ish for a human to do out of a crying obsidian, maybe a computer. And I did say something about something extra cruel that not even a computer could escape out of. And let's take a look at this. Let's leave this one on here. Why not? Turn that on. Let's make sure everything is working nice and good. And you can see bouncing up and down 
can't get close enough to punch it, and right back up. Trapped forever in purgatory. And now what about that computer one that I was mentioning? So let's get rid of all of these things, and let's do some cheaty spectator mode, and crawl into here. You can see something interesting happens here. So let's just take this and try and get into survival mode without glitching out. You hear a lot of things puffing, and uh, yeah, we have some, some puffer fish detectors right here. You can see on this one again, you can't make it down fast enough, and on this one, you actually can't make it to the ceiling because before you even get high enough to start punching on the ceiling one, the pufferfish just drag you back down. And you can't do this with the clock all that easily because the player can manipulate by holding spacebar and shift. You can't overcome the bubbles, but you can disrupt them. You can get some resonance frequency and have some issues where they stop you. And sure enough, you can't punch a block because there's no block to punch that isn't also moved. And even in our survival mode, even without our mining fatigue, you can see you just don't stay long enough to even break glass as hard as you can try. Uh, not even a computer can escape this one. Now, instead of doing lots and lots of block placing, let me just show you how to make the circuitry in this one. So I move over to spectator mode, which is the only way to get out of that, um, or creative mode to just break some things. And you can see we're using two circuits here. We're using an instant down redstone signal transfer and these pufferfish detectors. And let's get some Y level heights so you can see, because it does matter, you do need enough space. So you can see here at the bottom, we're at Y level 73 as we climb up higher and higher to our first pufferfish detector. You can see that that is at this level. This is Y level 130. And then each of these is up just a few blocks from each other to make sure the person can't just speed past you. And then here at 141 is our last one. And you can see that we go all the way up where they could not reach to this block on 150. Now, if you want to be extra, extra cruel, and I would suggest it, I actually would tell you to have these puffer fish going up all the rest of the way in case somebody tries to do some combat logging and glitch the game past the puffer fish. So, shouldn't really be possible, but if you just add a bunch of puffer fish up here, then even if they manage to skip by these, it won't save them because they are still going to get dragged down before they can break anything. So now let's look at these circuits and give some credits as I go along. This first one right here is the instant wireless redstone signal, and this is by Ray's Works, and I'll have some links in the description. And it really is about as simple as it looks. You have a daylight sensor that you then have coming in to this direction, and on this direction, like this, like this, one more sensor here, and then two dots of redstone, or the one dot like this. And if this block is covered, you can see that that turns off. And just like so, without it, we have our bit of redstone dust, and when we put a block in the way, that turns off. Now, this circuit right here, you can see that I have turned on in such a way that whenever the redstone turns off, that turns on this redstone torch, which then extends this. So again, you do want to make sure that you're doing your circuits in the correct order. So they are going up until they hit the pufferfish detector, Need the pufferfish detector, this turns on and they get sucked down. And it's the same for all four sides. If any one of them turns on, then they get pulled down. If any combination of them is on, then they get pulled down. Speaking of that pufferfish detector, 
Let's clear out this inventory. And it's a little bit more difficult in creative mode, actually, excuse me, than in survival mode. This is some creative mode helpers. This is what you need in survival mode. I take an extra rail or two is also very helpful. And this, as far as I know, is by methods. So I will link that in the description as well. And we're going to start with a bottom half slab that is going to have a fence connected to it, specifically a fence, specifically a light pressure plate. These are very specific. And then I'm just going to build up some blocks around them in terms of what your signal is going to be. You're going to need two dots right here. And then I am going to get some extra room because especially in creative mode, puffer fish are a little bit on the glitchy side. You need to have them puff up before they'll line up properly, and it's a little strange. And in create and in survival, this is a bucket of water as well, but in creative mode, it is not. So let's actually get this into the inventory. We're going to put our puffer fish down. We're going to suck that up, get some rails, and try and get him into there. And once he's in, we're going to hit a bucket so it doesn't die. But you can see it'll do some weird things where it'll actually activate both of these redstone at the same time. Or that is when it, even when it's not puffed up, you can see this is on and shouldn't be. And the issue is that essentially you need to puff them up first. This game is weird sometimes. What can I tell you? Let's block that off. Let's push this guy back over. And now let's put our bucket of water here. And because he's been puffed up that first time, yeah, this game is weird. This is not powered. And if I get, say, a light, let's make that a redstone light, if I can spell, so we can see here that if you put a armor stand next to it, it's very quick, which is why I like it. So when that goes away, this will also deflate over time. Quick inflate, slightly slow to deflate, and you can see that what I used is that when it detects something, there is a sticky piston with a block right here, so that will inflate, it will push that block, which will then turn this whole thing on to switch over, and it's one way to get rid of it. And then once it goes away, the switch is back, and the player is then shoved up into the air again, and... Uh, Looks like Dream was not able to escape the prison, so nothing to do with the fact that that may be an armor stand and not actually Dream. Let's use our imaginations here. I don't use mods. You know, what can you do? If you found this video interesting, I would appreciate that like. If you found it helpful and you want to be really mean to a friend or to your favorite Minecraft YouTuber, share this with them so they can put that in their world. And for more videos just like this, do be sure to subscribe and turn on all those notifications. If you're interested in supporting my work like this, I do have a join button that does have some additional benefits if you are interested. Thanks for stopping by.